Hi! Previously, I've showed you how to receive a shipment and invoice together when using the Purchase Order Processing Module for Microsoft Dynamics GP. Today, I want to talk about what receiving a shipment and invoice means versus receiving a shipment and invoice separately. So in the Purchasing Series under Transactions, let's go to Receiving Transaction Entry. Now, the assumption I'm making here is that you already have your purchase orders in the system. Think about physically receiving the goods and physically receiving the invoice. Frequently, these will go to two separate people. The person who ordered the goods will receive them, and the person in accounts payable will receive the invoice. And so by having this capability being two separate processes, it gives you some checks and balances to make sure that the physical goods were received and that the invoice has been received as well. So, if you want to receive both together under receiving transaction, you'd simply select uh, shipment and invoice. It'll give you a receipt number. We'll just tap past that. That's a computer generated number to track this receipt versus all other receipts because you could actually get the same vendor um, invoice number for different vendors or even the same vendor if they don't have a good accounting system. So let's put in 500 as our invoice number. And I'm going to do a search and find the attractive telephone company. And this time I'll look at auto receive and I can see all the POs I have out there and all the or item numbers on each PO. So if I want to receive this particular item, I will click receive here. And I have the option of telling it how many quanti were quantity on the invoice and that would also include how many were uh, received as well. And let me go ahead and post this. Now, if this was two separate processes, if I was the person who ordered the shipment and I only received the goods, I did not receive the invoice, I would come in oops, under shipment and key in um, the shipment number. Now, you'll notice it's not a required field. That's because sometimes shipment documents do not have a number on them. And again, I will choose attractive telephone. I'll click on auto receive and again I see all my documents out here so I could go in and say I received these 10 cordless phones so I'm going to receive those so I have received those Now you'll notice the quantity invoice is zero so that tells me that I've just received them I don't know when the invoice is coming and so forth now when the AP person gets the invoice because they're only getting the invoice and they're not getting the goods they're going to come in to enter match invoices. And now when they come in here, we have a receipt number again. Notice it is a required field to put in the vendor document number because that is an invoice number. And again, I'll put in attractive telephone. And I can click on auto invoice and now I'm only seeing a list of all the goods that have been received but not invoiced. You remember when we received those, there was three items on the list and we selected one. Now these are all the ones that have been received but not invoiced yet. So I'm going to select those and click on invoice. So the difference between the two is it provides your organization with some checks and balances. Now if you change, let's post this and let's go back to the shipment, receiving the shipment. If you change the dollar value associated with it, and choose attractive telephone again, and let's say on my receipt I can see that the dollar value has changed. I can enter in the dollar value here if I choose. You'll notice that at this point it doesn't go into accounts payable, it goes into accrued purchasing. And so I'll post that. Now let's go back to enter match invoices. Back to attractive telephone. Again, I only see items that I've received. And you'll notice that there is some documentation here that the amount, I've got a visual cue, that the amount changed from the original amount. So if I come in here and say it ended up being $42 a unit, when I go into distribution, it just warned me that the distribution amounts were different. Now I can see, because 
the amount that went into a crude was different than what it actually ended up being, so it adjusted for the difference between the two. I know that's a lot to take in in just a couple minutes, but I hope that helps. Thanks.